You can start with whatever you want. Excellent. Okay. Um, hi all. Well, welcome for the campaign product tools uh, kind of workshop and demonstration. Uh, this is a quick 30 minute workshop. I'm going to do a very quick demo of the tool and talk about what's next and uh, preview some things we think we can do uh, to have high impact with the tools. Um, so the campaign product tools are a response to a problem we've been seeing for a while uh, with grantees, especially in the global south, which is that the, the programs that have been dashboard and other metrics tools only are used in the reporting and they don't help folks actually organize the events. And so there's been this gap for the vast majority of rapid grants in the global south around like getting people to effectively sign up and participate in events using on the key tools. Uh, the interface for signing up is very confusing, etc. Um, this is part of a larger set of kind of user needs we've identified as part of the movement of organizing research. Um, I am an advisor on this tool. I'm not actually part of the product team, uh, but Euphemia, which I think you all know, uh, is uh, working directly with the product team to help kind of build instructional tools and that kind of stuff. And I'm on her team uh, uh, for the campaigns. Welcome. Uh, so we, when we started kind of doing research on campaigns and event tools, uh, uh, Alana, the product manager, uh, went and talked to a bunch of grantees who were running events and campaigns. And we heard a lot of requests. Uh, a lot of them had to do with like list building, actually talking about like, damn, yeah, I have an event, let me advertise it to the movement. How do I make sure other organizers know that I'm running events so they can learn from my events or participate or join? Um, and then all of this kind of affects things like grant reporting, which organizers consistently say is very hard to show the impact they are having. Uh, through the events here. The programs of events dashboard is sometimes inaccurate, event metrics is sometimes inaccurate, hashtag tool is kind of hard to hack, different campaign tools. And so this is where we came up with this set of priorities. There's about 12 of them. Uh, we, we might not work through all of them uh, over the course of the you know, next few years as the campaign product team works on it, but we decided to start with event registration because any time down next so a campaign or an event. So I, we're going to make edits between X date and Y date on a Wikipedia project. You need to know who is going to make those edits. Um, and this is one of the, the consistent problems with the programs and events dashboard, is that when you register a newcomer to that event, uh, they are very confused by the interface. And it doesn't always help with things like account creation. It's not integrated into um, And so we, we started with event registration uh, to kind of provide something within the Wikimedia ecosystem so you're not having to go through Google Forms or other tools that is equivalent to uh, the needs of other event registration tools, uh, but privacy sensitive and demonstrates that you're doing work to other Wikimedia communities. So it's visible on the platform rather than what's happening right now, which is a lot of affiliates keep survey software off in a corner that's really hard to manage, that sometimes you don't show you're actually running the event to anyone else. Um, so uh, it right now has about six features, uh, and it's enabled on the meta. We have a plan to enable it on other, other wikis. And we're looking for language wikipedias that want to be tested where organizers think it would be easy to turn it on. So we don't think like English and French are necessarily the easiest to work with uh, in this because it's a, it's a new tool, it's connected to a lot of other things, but we want to start with maybe some smaller languages or kind of regional languages that might be easy to work with. Um, and if you want to test it now, you can go to test.wikipedia.org and the uh, same features that I'm going to show you on Meta will work. So it's the exact same kind of way of, of doing this. So if you want to test the tool while I go through the demo, 
you can do that. I'm also, I'm going to show you an event that, uh, like a draft event that we're going to create it now on Meta as a demonstration. But I have all of the steps that I'm going to go through uh, documented in the slides. And so you can find the slides on the, the, um, on, on the wiki uh, now. So to create an event uh, using this tool, uh, and then I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about the benefits and how we kind of fit this into something else. Um, you need to create a, a page in the event namespace on Meta. And so I am going to put the mic in. We'll, we'll try this. No. Um, we'll prop up the mic here. So the, the audio is mostly for the recording, so I just want to make sure that the... Um, so if I want to create an event, I could go uh, into the event namespace like you would for any other uh, page on a wiki, and I can say uh, sandbox, um, and then the name of the event. So I could do glam wiki text, for example, and I already created a page just to make sure I understood. You click on the red link, and you'd say, here is a page for my event. Like any other wiki page, you can represent whatever you want. What we wanted to do, though, is pull the user registration out of the wiki text, because it both interferes with translation on Meta, but also confuses new editors. Signing a username on the wiki is very confusing, and it's a really bad first activity <laughs> to do with books. Um, and then it, it, it actually, when you're doing international or multi-wiki events, it introduces a lot of complexity um, over time. And so uh, I'm going to say creating an event page with information, uh, and then I go publish. And uh, in the namespace, oh, sorry, I'm in the wrong account. I don't have the link. Um, and I'll, I'll talk about user rights in a second. Um, um, once I create the event page, uh, so if I click edit, uh, that's an interesting book. So it's hard. Interesting. I'm going to go to the event that I created yesterday. Um, so, uh, at, once I've created the event, if I'm the page creator, uh, yeah, is that, is that working? <laughs> uh, what, once I've created an event, colon, whatever the name of my page is, you should get a button here, if you have the user right, you'll get the button, enable registration. And what it does is it asks me what time is my event going to be and where? So you can pick your time zone. In this case, we'd be uh, Montevideo. Uh, so Montevideo. Uh, and the start time is, uh, say, today at a uh, particular point in time, and then like end time next week. And this is what I think someone's going to edit. I can add organizers. So I could add Bodhi. Uh, if I can spell your H is what? 1D. Yeah, 1D, H. Uh, yeah, that one. No. SAT B. What? SAT B or BHI SAT B. Yeah, okay. I shouldn't have picked the photos in here. TG. 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 T. T for T T W. W. Ah, there we go. Well, the many different spellings of Bodhi. Um, so if if Bodhi had the user right, I could add him as an additional organizer that would give additional data to the person. Um, and then I can also put a link to a programs and events dashboard uh, event. Um, the, the link to the event automatically sends the usernames to that event. 
So we can't create a dashboard uh, here in the tool, but if you go and create a dashboard as part of your normal tracking strategy, you just drop the URL to that event, and it would automatically send the usernames there and the date and time so that we can track it. And then I can pick online event, in-person event, or online and in-person event, and put in something like a meeting URL. So if I, say, had a Google Meet uh, that was being used for the meeting uh, for an online event, or I had a specific location, so we're like feet, uh, Uruguay, uh, and then we're like feet, Montevideo, and then if I had a Telegram or WhatsApp or some other coordination tool, I can put those all in here. And then I can also, uh, the newest feature that was just deployed this week is we also can collect some PII, personal identifying information from participants. So what we can do is in the registration, everyone has optional, can have optional questions. What is your gender? What is your age? What is your profession? And then uh, how confident do you feel about contributing to Wikimedia projects? And how, uh, do you belong to a Wikimedia affiliate? This is brand new. This just got deployed this week. The idea, the idea is that your event will start collecting data, demonstrating your impact on gender, age, and outreach strategy. And it's something that you don't necessarily need to report to the Wikimedia Foundation, but we can start collecting data to understand how events in different contexts affect gender, age, and profession. Um, what? I'm saying that the statistics help to plan as a group because you can see the trends and notice the demographic that you're reaching. And you need that and say, okay, we are reaching 20 to 30 year olds, now we need 30 to 50. Yeah, the idea is to give organizers a little bit of strategic steering data that you would normally get in other places, but do it in a privacy-sensitive way that's appropriate to the Wikimedia movement. So what it does is it asks the questions, then aggregates the data for you uh, as the organizer. So it doesn't attach it to each individual, but it says, as a group, you have over half the participants were women. Uh, and, and this will help with reporting, right? So you don't you no longer have to collect that information separately and then do it. And, and, and this is, especially for online organizing too, this is that we imagine it'll help better understand your audience. So if I click enable registration, if I did something wrong, like the date and time, uh, so I need to make it like later today, for example, Bodhi doesn't have the user right, so I'm going to remove him for right now, and then uh, I can click enable registration. Uh, I'll start tomorrow. Um, okay, cool. And so when I go back to the event page, as an organizer, I get an interface like this, uh, where I get to manage the event, I can see the participants uh, and the information. And what's nice about this is make sure that the essential data about the event is at the top of the page. So as a user interface feature, it's absolutely clear what's going on. But in, as I manage the event, I can, uh, I, I can see who the organizers are. I can change the vital statistics for the event. I can see if someone registers. So if you want to register right now for the event, you can go to that page. And you can say, uh, you know, I'm registering for the event. And then I can send messages now to all the participants. Uh, right now, it's only email. So uh, everyone who has email enabled on their account, you can send an email to. And so you can send something like update information, like, hey, there's a new URL. Uh, this is the logistics you need to know for the event. Um, the idea is we, we should also be able to do talk page messages as well uh, in the near term. Um, and the whole idea is it, you can do all of your like main contact action here. The added benefit of this, and I'll, I'll, I'll go and you'll see some of the events, 
um, that we've used it, uh, that I've demoed it on. Um, the added benefit of this, and I'll, I'll go to a private uh, So if I go to this event, and I'm not signed in yet, and I go register for the event, uh, it takes you to the login process, and you're creating an account, right? Um, so if you don't have an account, you're in the account dialog. And the idea is you get people to create accounts before they're at the IP address for your event, um, especially for people in the global south. This should help a lot. Yeah, uh, because the idea is you're distributing that to be out there, and because your contact information and you they click on a link and they're trying to join, maybe they reach out to you early and you realize they're blocked and you can work around this. You can figure out what you need to do to manage them before they arrive at the event. So you're only going to be affected by IP blocks that affect new accounts editing in a place, not the account creation blocks, nice. which is like really important uh, for that. Um, so, so this is what we have right now. It's only available in the event namespace on Meta. Uh, and you can see some kind of examples of events um, that are using it, like this, uh, uh, that's not turned on yet, let me find uh, so, um, the Wikimedia is the Uruguay just for the Women in Science uh, event here for the conference. Uh, I was doing this in my volunteer the event. Ah, so there's an edathon for Women in Science. Uh, what, you can, what you'll notice is that participants can, when they register, they can either choose uh, to register uh, publicly, uh, or uh, there's a hidden participant. So everyone register publicly because we're at a glam wiki event. But if we were at like a more sensitive event where you had like activists who didn't want to be identified with it, you would uh, there some of these accounts would be hidden. Um, uh, yeah, so you would have like people opting to do private registration as part of the event. Um, any questions so far? Okay. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so normally we ask uh, participants for an event to register beforehand for planning purposes. Am I able to also use the tool to ask people to register beforehand, or do they use it on the day for my statistics? So, so the the goal is for you to register people ahead of time and give them access to some of the key information like an event chat group. Uh, so the, the event chat group is only revealed once they've registered. So you'll have like a special URL like WhatsApp or Telegram where you're gonna do more of that direct contact with people and you can offer that as part of the event. So does this replace the meta page that we normally create for the event? It, it, it's, it's the data layer on top of the meta page. Normally create so you're not having the, the people don't have to edit the page at all. Like this one, all of the information about the event is created in the wiki text, but all the registration data is stored there. So you're not doing you're not copying usernames. You're not having newcomers messing up with your translation markup because they clicked the, 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 the something and they made a weird edit. The idea is to kind of separate the event information, like the stuff you normally document on the wiki, and the thing you need for data. Does that make sense? Do you have to uh, create for each event when you come? So it, 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 it's, it's only one event at a time, and it's based on a page in the event namespace, right? So if you're running a campaign and you have multiple events, you, you need to create a different Page. Yeah, but what you could do, for example, is I could say, you know, edit a thumb of Harrison Sciences, and I could have local sub events and only enable the registration on the sub pages. So you have like different information for like, okay, this is the local event for the campaign. Does that make sense? And just a minute, you say um, we still have to create a meta page. 
you still have to create like wiki text, right? So like I just did it over here, where I, like we have, so uh, I'll show you, I'll create another one, right? So if I do sandbox, um, so you know, Montevideo photo walk, right? And I'm, I'm focused on uh, doing that. You create the text page where it's like, okay, here are the instructions for the photo walk, and maybe you put a template in here for like information, whatever. Um, but the actual like user information can be enabled in the registration. So, and and this is where you capture the like key data. And the idea is we could eventually both create a calendar of all the movement events because we have all this data in one place. Um, but we can also do some other things to make it easier to find events. Thing you have the 